Hi, I'm Infernum. This is my recap for the anime Wistoria's Wand and Sword. If you like my recaps, please subscribe. Regarden Academy of Magic values talent in magic above all else. But what about those who have no talent? Is there a place for people without talents in this academy? A boy in the seventh floor dungeon descends every time to kill monsters with his companion, a black cat. Our boy has no magic, but he believes in himself, standing against hundreds of monsters and trying to deal with them without magic. Every day, lessons are held at the academy for magic students. The teacher explained how to use fire magic correctly and then called Will Surfort to come to the board and demonstrate magic. However, Will had done this before. The teacher told him to ignite the stones in front of him using magic. Will tried to use magic but couldn't do anything and the whole class started laughing at him. However, a girl sympathized with him, understanding that the teacher was deliberately mocking Will. The teacher was mocking Will and suddenly Xion intervened using fire magic to ignite what the teacher asked. The teacher asked not to use magic without permission, but Xion couldn't help himself. The teacher began to argue that magic is everything in this world, and people without magic and talent should leave this academy immediately because they would only be a burden. After lessons, Xion started teasing Will again, saying that Will was useless here. Suddenly, Colette appeared and stood up for Will. Saying that he is very kind and hardworking, Xion laughed, and didn't understand why such a good mage like Colette would stand up for him. After saying that he would never achieve anything, Xion and his friends left. Colette decided to take a walk with Will around the school. She told him not to listen to their words, and Will said he wasn't worried because he really couldn't use magic. He also said he was glad Colette was with him, which made Colette smile and blush. She told Will to watch his words and asked if he said such things to all the girls. Will replied that he was taught from childhood to always say nice things to girls and said that Colette was very cute and beautiful, which made Colette blush intensely and try to stop Will. Will then stopped and gazed at the tallest tower in the city. Colette asked what happened, but Will said everything was fine. He was just thinking about the tower and how beautiful it was because the barrier of the city is held by the mages of Avond. Will explained that the world was once tormented by celestial invaders until the greatest mages appeared and defeated them, bringing peace and tranquility to the people. The Mages of Avande is a title given to the best mages. Colette asked Will if the greatest mages watch over them, and Will said of course, they sit on the highest tower and observe them. In Will's past, he is sitting on the grass with a girl who tells him a story about the Mages of Avande and how she dreams of climbing the tower. Will said that he wanted to reach the tower together with her, and they made a promise to each other. However, Will's friend managed to become the best witch and climbed the tower, while Will couldn't do it, unable to forget their childhood promise. He tries his best to equal Elfie. Worker scolds Will for going to the dungeon again without permission, especially to the seventh floor. Will bowed and apologized, explaining that he is struggling with his studies and needs to earn points somehow. Worker reluctantly agrees to record the points for Will. Worker asked Will if he still remembered the magic of Avande, to which Will replied that he did. Worker explained that he must possess magic because magic is everything and success depends on it. Will understands this and tries his best to earn points. Worker told him to focus on his tests as he needs four more points and must earn them by the end of the week. Will immediately began studying the monsters for which he could earn four points. Worker suggested that he could earn the points by defeating Baskerville on the sixth floor. Will hugged the professor, but Xion overheard them and went to the sixth floor to try to get rid of Will from the academy. The next day, Will, along with his companion Cat, headed to the sixth floor. However, the Cat sensed that something was wrong, but Will reassured her that everything was fine. Xion's team, along with his friends, also went to the sixth floor to deal with the monsters quickly so that Will wouldn't be able to earn his points and would be expelled. Xion's friends stopped him and warned him that this wasn't a joke since they were on the sixth floor of the dungeon. Xion went ahead but suddenly turned around as a monster struck one of his friends. Another friend immediately began screaming upon seeing the monster in front of him. Will heard this and ran toward the sound. When Will arrived, he saw a huge monster, an evil sentinel, which is worth five plus points and typically resides much deeper in the dungeon. How did it get here? In front of the monster sat Xion. Magic didn't affect the monster because it was too strong, and Xion had no chance. Xion was desperately trying to defeat the monster. Will thought he needed to save Xion, but suddenly stopped, remembering if he was obligated to save Xion, who bullied him every day. 
Will wanted to leave Xion and pretend he didn't see him. However, a voice suddenly appeared in his head, and Elfie appeared before him. She told him he was wrong and that he was the kindest person in the world, incapable of simply closing his eyes and not helping others. Will said that Elfie was mistaken because all he wanted was to be by her side. He decided to fight. Will ran and managed to stop the monster's strike. At the same moment, in worker's office, a professor arrived and reported that a group of students had gone into the dungeon. He asked Worker to send a familiar to find and extract them. Worker asked which floor they were on, and the professor replied, the sixth floor. Worker turned to him and said there was nothing to worry about because Will was there. He activated a hologram that was being transmitted by the cat always accompanying Will. Despite not having magic, Will was fighting the powerful monster with ease, delivering critical hits every time. Watching this, Worker remarked that Will was a heretic, unable to use magic, yet in a world ruled by magic, there would be no equal to Will in physical strength. He was the only warrior who could remember all the opponent's moves in a single battle, and one swing of Will's sword was faster than lightning. Will defeated the monster and then approached Xion, extending his hand and asking if he was hurt. Xion was furious and didn't want to accept that the person he considered pathetic had saved him. Meanwhile, the professor who had reported the students became angry and slammed the table, refusing to acknowledge that someone without magical talent was much stronger than the mages. He left Worker's office in frustration. The next morning, Worker was still upset, but, having seen everything Will had done, didn't scold him. Instead, he thanked him for defeating the monster and awarded him 10 points. This is the story of a boy who turned the world upside down, a story where the wand met the sword. Five years ago, everyone laughed at Will because he couldn't do magic. They all discussed how he was invited to the academy just to lure Lady Elfie. Will, together with Worker, was in the headmaster's office, and using magic, the headmaster sent a sword to Will, attacking him. Will easily destroyed her magic. Worker, seeing such power, fell down, and the headmaster congratulated Will and allowed him to continue his studies at the academy. Will began asking the headmaster if he could become stronger and be near Elfie. The headmaster replied that if his will is strong, he can do anything. Will and Worker left, and the headmaster said that Will was to blame for choosing such a difficult path for himself, as it would be very hard for him to be near Elfie without magic. At the academy, everything remained the same. Worker teaches students how to use magic properly and explains what the Tower of Magic is and how to get there. Will studies together with his pet, Kiki. Worker says that to get into the tower, you need to earn 2,000 points, but only a few have managed to do so. Worker started scolding everyone, saying they shouldn't think about the tower, but rather focus on finishing the academy properly. Will and Colet walk down the corridor and talk about how Worker scolded everyone. Colet was surprised why Worker was pressing Will so hard, but Will said that Worker had always been like that. Suddenly, Will and Colet saw a guy praising Xion for defeating the Sentinel in the dungeon and getting extra points for it. But it's not that simple, because the guy praising Xion wasn't even there. He was just talking based on rumors. Xion himself remained silent and didn't agree with this praise because it wasn't him who defeated the Sentinel. It was Will who defeated him and saved Xion. Suddenly, Xion saw Will and rushed at him, grabbing him by the collar, wanting to say something, but ultimately stayed silent. Colette witnessed it all and tried to defend Will again, but Xion let him go and walked away. Colette asked what had happened again to which Will replied that it was nothing. One of the teachers, Edward, came to the headmaster and complained about Will because he couldn't stand the fact that a non-magic wielder was becoming stronger than the mages. However, the headmaster began defending Will and said that he was only in his sixth year of study. Edward didn't like that someone like a warrior could study at the Magic Academy. The headmaster said that Will is a diligent student and an excellent student. Even if we don't see magic in him now, he will become either a healer or a wise scholar in the future. However, Edward replied that this brat wants to become a mage of Avendi, not just a scholar. The headmaster told Edward that he could personally test Will, and if Will fails, then he will be expelled from the academy. Edward questioned whether the headmaster was sure about this decision, noting that he isn't as kind as Worker, and then he left. The headmaster mentioned that Edward is the closest to knowing about the mages of Avende and knows how to test Will. Will and Colet returned to their lockers, collected their belongings, and then went to the library where Will studied the history of elves and dwarves. Colette noticed that Will was reviewing what he had already studied, but Will explained that he couldn't afford to lose any points because it meant everything to him. Additionally, 
He mentioned his struggle to understand dwarves who never give up and handle difficulties. Colet noticed a strand of gray hair on Will and advised him to rest more often. She joked about wanting to pull it out, but Will insisted against it. While they were joking, Edward appeared and called Will to go with him. As they walked together, Edward said he would personally test Will's abilities. Edward used dark magic. Will saw this and was surprised. Edward told Will that if he could land even one blow, Edward would acknowledge him and give him an additional five points. Edward used his magic without warning. The headmaster called Worker to her office and told him that he needed to know everything. She used magic to show Worker how Edward was testing Will, and she forbid Worker from intervening because she wanted to see if Will was worthy of becoming a Mage of Avendi. Worker was worried for Will because Edward had been the top candidate for Mage of Avendi, though he hadn't passed further. Will couldn't understand why Edward's basic spells were so powerful. Will tried to break through Edward's barrier with his foot, but couldn't do anything, and Edward attacked him, knocking Will back. Will realized that Edward was very strong and had no weak spots for him to attack. Edward said that he only used two spells of magic because he had honed them all his life to make them much stronger. Edward attacked Will again, hitting him with each of his spells. Will bowed his head and began to despair that he couldn't win, wishing he had a sword. Colette returned to the locker and started worrying about Will, knowing he was alone with Edward. Colette began to think indecent thoughts when suddenly injured Kiki appeared and started knocking on Will's locker. Colette understood everything and decided to open the locker, realizing that Will needed something from there. Edward started walking towards Will, saying that as you can see, without magic, you're nothing and you won't have the strength to become a mage of Avendi. He asked about the history where dwarves lost and rose again, then lunged at Will with his foot. But Will didn't give up and stood up, saying that even so, he still wants to become a mage of Avendi. Edward couldn't understand why Will didn't give up and wanted to enter the mage of Avendi so much. Will held his ground and said that he wants to be by his beloved side and wants to keep his promise to Elfie. Edward became angry because Will's reason was love. Suddenly, Colette appeared and threw a sword to Will. Will grabbed his sword, thanked Colette, and took it in his hands. Edward said he would destroy Will, but as we all know, Will with a sword is incredible. Moreover, he studied all of the opponent's abilities, but Will was afraid of Edward, realizing how incredibly strong he was. For Will, Edward was now like a wall standing between him and Avendi. As he recounted the story of the dwarves, he reminded that there was another version where the Dwarf King was able to strike down a wand with a simple blade. With his sword, Will easily managed to attack Edward. Edward turned around, unwilling to accept this, and left, also awarding Will the five points he promised. The headmaster observed all of this with surprise and joy. Worker praised Will for braving Edward's attacks and striking him from a blind spot allowing him to land his blow on Edward. The headmaster was also impressed by Will, noting that if he hadn't taken such risks, he wouldn't have been able to break through Edward's attacks and defenses. Elfie and Will are having a farewell conversation. Elfie says she knows Will well, as he is the kindest and bravest person she knows. She gives him her glasses and says it's time to say goodbye before heading to the tower. Will clutches his chest and then starts shouting that he will definitely climb the tower and do everything he can to reach it even if the whole world is against them, because he remembers his childhood promise. Elfie hears this and starts crying. Will tells her that they will watch the sunset together. She turns around and says she remembers the promise and will always wait for Will in the tower. Worker stands behind Will, unsure of what to say, while Will starts crying and says this is the last time he will act so pitifully. In Slamland Street, Will works as a delivery boy, distributing newspapers all over the city. Donan praises Will for starting work early in the morning. Will accidentally stubs his toe, causing all the newspapers to fly out of his hands, quickly grabs them all, and approaches the last one, seeing the news about Elfie. She has become the first wizard to unlock 12 new spells, and the Magic Institute has assigned her a task related to the new spells. Elfie is the client. Will is surprised by this news. He rushes to Rusty's room and asks for an artifact, explaining that Elfie has given him a task and that he must hurry to collect Frostwalker cores. Without Rusty's artifacts, Will won't be able to manage. Rusty gives him his first artifacts, and Will thanks him before heading to the fourth floor of the dungeon. The dungeon is a place where children learn magic and conquer dungeons to discover new things. Will noticed a crowd gathering in the dungeon, eager to help Elfie. Shion defeated a Frostwalker and was praised, but he was disappointed that Will had defeated the strongest monster while he only managed to defeat some weak Frostwalkers. Will saw Shion's aura and told him that he was very strong. Will continued on, 
determined not to fall behind, and noticed a girl being attacked by monsters. He quickly reacted and destroyed them with his sword. The girl thanked Will and introduced herself as Iris. In Worker's Lesson, he explains how to create their own spell, and those who succeed might be invited to the tower as heroes. When asked if Lady Elfie is special, Worker said she is not just special but incredible because she created 12 new spells. Everyone started discussing that ice magic is the strongest. Colette began to speculate that Elfie is so powerful, and her friend mentioned that Colette is jealous of Will because his childhood friend might take him away. Colette forgot about the lesson and started talking loudly, causing Worker to scold them and tell them to be quieter. Iris and Will go to the dungeon together. Iris says that Will is known as the greatest failure in the academy. Will asked why she isn't bothered by his title. Iris stopped and said she wouldn't insult someone who saved her life, and even though magic may not be his forte, she is still glad that Will possesses such skill with a sword. Will asked Iris what she was doing there. Iris replied that she was there on Elfie's request because she also wanted to climb the tower and become an Avend. Will explained that legends say the world will be shrouded in darkness again, the barrier will fall, and people will have to fight against powerful monsters. In those times, Avenda mages will need to defend humanity. Iris shared that she had met Elfie before. Once she was in trouble, just like today, and Elfie appeared and instantly destroyed all the monsters. Elfie lifted Iris, and in that moment, Iris fell in love with her and remains impressed to this day. Kiki called Will, and he followed her, sensing that something was wrong. Ahead, a powerful monster was lurking. Iris said she couldn't detect anyone with her search spell. Will headed towards the monster despite Iris trying to stop him. Suddenly, Will noticed the monster appearing from above. While Iris was confused, Will saved her and saw the powerful Frostrex. Will said he was right. It wasn't just a regular Frostwalker in front of them. Frostrex is the highest form of Frostwalker, worth six points. Will left Iris on the ground and decided to fight alone. Iris warned that physical attacks wouldn't defeat it and that touching it would cause instant freezing. Will told Iris not to worry because he had defeated such monsters before. He took out the artifacts Rusty had given him and attacked the monster. Iris hid and watched as Will, using incredible speed, advanced towards the monster and utilized his artifact. Will spun around the monster from all sides. As the monster couldn't react quickly enough, Will encased it completely. The Frostrex's main weakness was explosive attacks and fire. Will used his artifact, activated it, and detonated all the threads that were binding the monster, which destroyed it instantly. Will returned his artifact and remarked on how amazing Rusty was for making such powerful artifacts. Iris decided to drop the pretense, removed her mask, and said that the rumors about Will described him as much weaker than he actually was. Will mentioned that they had obtained a huge core and that they needed to leave. Iris agreed, and they headed back. At the Mage Tower, Iris reflected that Will was weak, as he didn't even have magic and was just a warrior. She requested permission to enter the chamber where the five great Aven mages were, including Elfie. Iris said she wanted to report something interesting. The Aven mages began discussing that if the barrier fell now, the world would immediately be in danger. Iris reported that she had found a useless person with no magic who only possessed skill with his sword. The Aven mages were all against Will, and there was tension among them as one mage said she had had enough of useless people, and now there was this talentless person without magic. However, the situation was resolved peacefully and everyone left the meeting place. Iris was left alone with Elfie and said that the young man Elfie had mentioned was indeed interesting. Elfie accepted the core that Will had acquired and said that she was still waiting for him there. 